Now, how do we reinvent the systems of today so that they are fit for tomorrow? That's the question that we're asking ourselves all day here. Um, is there a secret recipe for systems change? We're going to explore that now with two of our guests, uh, Zaid Hassan, uh, who's author of The Social Labs Revolution, um, and, and someone who's trying to reinvent the plastic system, among others, uh, Rob Upsama uh, of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Um, welcome to you both. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And Zaid, you'll be speaking later on, uh, yeah. as the tannoy reminds us. Um, no spoilers, uh -huh. uh, but what, what's the thing you want to leave people with when you, when you speak later on? Well, I think um, one, of the, one of the ideas that I found most difficult in trying to do systems changes is this idea that you can change systems without changing yourself. And I think that's fundamentally a challenge, where people kind of go, well, my strategy didn't work, why didn't it work? other people need to change their behavior, but I don't really need to do anything. And it's a very seductive myth that you can actually come up with a strategy, you can come up with something to do that really is about other people, but not really about yourself. Um, so you're not really an actor in Do you mean ways. the people that, that change, the, the people who need to change are the people trying to do systems change? No, or everybody. Everybody, <coughs> okay. Yeah, so there's no distinction between who does need to change and who doesn't. But when we come up with responses, we tend to make that distinction. We tend to kind of go, those people over there need to change, but I'm good. Because, you know, I recycle and I ride a bike and mm. it's all good. Um, and I think that's a very dangerous idea. And, and what examples were you, <coughs> were you looking at in your... So what kinds of examples of where this experimentation approach maybe takes over, like, a planned strategy? Yeah. Concept? Yeah, I mean, so I've worked uh, across the board on systems, you know, food systems, climate change, uh, public health care issues, child malnutrition. So I've worked in a lot of different spaces. Um, and you know, what's common across all those spaces is that generally the dominant response is to come up with a centralized plan. And, and it's, it's, slightly, um, it's slightly stereotypical and slightly disparaging, but it's almost like a neo-Soviet approach. It's almost like you know, a bunch of white men at the top come up with an idea, then they send everyone a diktat, and you get this like, you know, instruction. The instruction says, you're gonna mine 50 tons of coal today, and you kind of go, oh, okay, well, I don't know how to do that, and I don't think it's gonna work, but I gotta do it, otherwise I get sent to Siberia. But that's essentially, <laughs> you know, that's essentially what we do with strategies. We come up with a central plan and then we try and implement it. And then when it doesn't work because people don't like it or can't do it, we blame them for it. Uh, uh, and I've heard you say that <coughs> something like 90% of plans fail. Yeah. Why do we keep More doing it? More in my case, actually. Well, I mean, so the, the other kind of myth around change is that it's rational. That we basically look at systems and we analyze them and we come up with a rational course of action. And we say, okay, you know, the, the data says we should do A, B, and C. And what I found is that that is absolutely not what happens. You know, we do the analysis. And, and my experience is, you know, people come to us and say, tell, tell us what we need to do. And we say, well, you need to do A, B, and C. And the response to that is, well, I don't, I don't really want to do A. Uh, I'll do a little bit of B and I don't want to do C. And it's like, but the data is saying you need to change these things. And it's like, I don't know why I don't want to do them, but I don't want to do them. So really, it's an irrational impulse that causes us to change. We're trained to think that it's a rational analysis, but it, it's, it's not. It never really is. That's not why we change, basically. That's Rob, wetting our appetite for huh? later, isn't that, it? That <laughs> certainly is wetting our appetite for later. <laughs> yeah. Rob, um, systemic initiatives is uh, your bag at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Uh, uh, we were just speaking with Clem uh, about uh, Clementine Schutterden about uh, food, fashion, and plastics. They're all uh, on, on the menu for you. Um, how similar is this to your approach, this experimentation and uh, getting everyone around the table? Is that, is that the approach you take or um, is it something else? Yeah, I, I think totally and I think I entirely agree with you, uh, Zaid. You know, there is, if, if you cannot make a plan to work it through and you asked before, Joe, is there a secret recipe? I definitely don't think there is a secret recipe that you just can apply, you know, cookie cutter type uh, over and over again. And come to the same outcome because by definition you know we're trying to shift massive complex dynamic systems here where there are lots of people involved lots of interests and you can never quite predict how it's gonna go so what I think is critical it is getting everyone around the table all the critical key actors and this sounds so obvious but when we started on a uh, work with plastics for example the new plastics economy that didn't exist there was no single dialogue mechanism to bring all the major businesses across the plastics industry together, uh, the key governments, the key NGOs that didn't exist, and we created that. That was a critical first step. I think another thing that's critical is to have a clear and positive vision and really know where you're going to go. 
And I think that's been critical for us as a foundation in general with the circular economy. It's a point at the horizon that mm -hmm. you can kind of rally everyone behind. It's not just pointing at the problem, but it's pointing at the solution. Where can we go? So gathering everyone together around the table, working towards that vision, and then understanding that it's not, there's no one single magic silver bullet that can get you there. And so we had, in the early days of um, the new plastic economy, when we had pulled together that consortium, we had a lot of discussions, you know, what, what will switch over the plastics economy? Do we need some super new innovation, a new material, a new technology? Do we need um, governments to make new policies? Do we need businesses to take action? Do we need more evidence based? Do we need more public awareness? And the simple answer eventually was, we don't need any of these, but we need all of them. And at the same time, and they mutually reinforce each other and they push the system at different buttons. And that way you build mutually reinforcing momentum and eventually want to get to a tipping point where the system is irreversibly so on a different So it sounds path. like there are some things that you're learning from trying to uh, change a system, mm. um, which, so there's maybe not a secret recipe, but there's some rules of thumb that some are elements, good to come yeah. back to. And Zaid, uh, just before we wrap up here and, and return to the main stage uh, at the summit, if you were asked to reinvent the food system, to redesign the food system, shift it towards a, a more circular model, yeah. where would you start? And I'm not, I mean, it's not, I get the impression it's you not specific things, by the it's mindset. <laughs> Well, it, it is obviously mindsets, but um, mindsets are a bit like the ocean that we kind of swim in. We don't really see them. Um, so part of the challenge is we don't see them. So how do you learn to see them? And then how do you learn to see that they influence what you do on a daily basis? Um, so I would say practice, and that's what I'm going to talk about. You change practice, basically. Well, we very much look forward to it. Thank you for joining us on A View from the Summit, and enjoy the rest of your